Speak with Mario Romero with the Romero team of the military agency. And thanks for visiting our site. Uh, today is going to be a series of videos on Phoenix, how it evolved, developed. And um, I'd like to introduce our guest today, John Jackomart. And he is a local Phoenix historian. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about your background, how you became interested in historic preservation, and why you, en I know you enjoy it quite a bit. So, well, I'm an Arizona native, born in Tucson, raised in Phoenix. We moved here in 1956 for the opening of the first mall in Phoenix, Park Central. And we lived in the, the first planned development of Phoenix, Maryvale. So uh, I grew up here, went to high school here, earlier went to college in Iowa, and then came back to Phoenix, and much later, much, much later, graduated from ASU. Uh, I, my first house was in uh, Del Norte uh, subdivision, and we bought from the original owner. I still have the blueprints uh, from 1939, I've not lived in that house since 1984, but I met the architect and, and my passion for historic and real estate started then. We lived right by Encano Park. Uh, at various times I've, I've done histories of Encano Park in my neighborhood, um, and that was it. That was the start of my passion. So, well, I know you're a wealth of information. so. I think our viewers are going to be in for a treat if you're really interested about how Phoenix came about. John, tell us about Phoenix how it and how it evolved into the city, it, the city we have today. I mean, it was a tiny little village at the turn of the century, and now we're, the metro area is over four million people. How did that happen? Uh, in 1867, uh, the, uh, the first uh, Jack Swilling, uh, discovered he was in the white tanks and, and looked out and, and saw that uh, uh, there was agriculture and possibilities uh, from the remnants of a canal system. He started a canal company and in also 67 the first survey was done uh, in Arizona and it started at the confluence of the Gila and Salt River uh, by uh, uh, Phoenix uh, International Raceway. Now. Okay. And from that survey, uh, a, was, a survey was done uh, as far as sections of land, 640 acres, uh, and that survey was started at that point. Uh, in front of me is a property ownership from 1929. At that time, uh, development started, uh, historic, what are now historic districts, uh, but they were tracts of land. Uh, subdivisions had been set up uh, by this time in Cano Palmcroft, but basically they were surveyed and they were 40 acre tracts. There still were, uh, in 1929, uh, going further north, uh, this is just Thomas Road, and, and you can see whole areas are owned by individuals. They were not subdivided. You can see the Indian School had been there before. Uh, the Phoenix Country Club, uh, as of 1920, uh, was in that location. Directly across from the Phoenix Country Club was owned by the DuPonts, the Delaware DuPonts. Uh, and uh, remained in, uh, owned by the DuPonts until North High came about in 1938-39. In, uh, um, going further east, you can see uh, there isn't uh, a lot of uh, development. It's all individually owned. You can see the canal system. You can see um, development further south um, and the whole picture this is how Phoenix was in relation to the whole valley very very small the northernmost point uh, was was still 
was Indian School Road. And the southernmost point uh, was just south. When, when Phoenix was platted, it was 7th Street uh, west to 7th Avenue. Further west from 7th Avenue was a dense forest of mesquite. And they didn't have the tools uh, to cut down the mesquite. So that was the boundary, 7th to 7th. Van Buren was the northernmost boundary, and southern was uh, Harrison, the railroad tracks. And it stayed that way for quite a long time. Expansion really started uh, in, in, uh, after the war, 1950, uh, the first census of housing. 40% of the housing stock of Phoenix was built between 45 and 50. So people say the boom came, it came right after the war. I understand we had a lot of uh, people from Second World War, a lot of the military were on the west side, and they came here because of our climate, lack of snow, decided to stay. And didn't air conditioning have a big part of that? Very much so. Uh, commercially, the first, uh, and, and it's a toss-up between uh, the Westward Ho and the San Carlos. Uh, both say that they had the first air conditioning as such. Uh, along the way the Fox Theater had air conditioning, but commercial air conditioning, air-cooled uh, Gettle uh, and Palmer started with air-cooled. Uh, Gettle also dealt with more evaporative coolers that, that came after the war, but it wasn't commercially uh, until the early 50s. <clears throat> and then the higher end homes had, and, and evaporative coolers existed. Mm -hmm. But that, that made it uh, available for most of the public and it made it uh, doable as far as living here in the summer. Doable, tolerable. Tolerable. In the old days, if, if you had money, you, you left in the summer, you either went uh, to Prescott, uh, Idlewild area, uh, Prescott Country Club. If you had money, you went to San Diego. If you really had money, you went to La Jolla. And, and certain people, uh, uh, the Gosnells who started, uh, they went to Hawaii. But, but people left in the summer. The resorts, uh, the Biltmore closed during the summer. You didn't stay. Uh, Chicago people, they didn't want to come here in the summer. The rest of us, were here and worked. So, John, tell us a little bit about the various historic, historic districts, what the names are, how many we have, and kind of the general boundaries. I think a lot of people are under the misconception that Phoenix is so new that we don't have these little neighborhoods in central Phoenix that are very typical of a lot of architecture on the west coast and also on the midwest. And, they'd be shocked to find the urban living that exists in downtown Phoenix. Well, we have a wealth of architecture in the valley and residential architecture. Uh, we were small for so long. 1920 was the first time we surpassed Tucson. 29,000 population. We were five square miles. Now we're over 500 square miles. So it, it's very small, but we have uh, currently 35 or 36 historic districts within the city. And this year the City of Phoenix celebrates 30 years as far as a historic preservation office. Uh, one of the best uh, guides to uh, historic Phoenix is Historic Neighborhoods of Phoenix Maps, uh, which was done showing the architectural styles and the list of the neighborhoods. Currently this shows 35 and the difference between 35 and 36 is Garfield and North Garfield. Uh, within the city it's considered Garfield, North and Garfield. Greater uh, Garfield. Greater Garfield. Mm -hmm. And or, originally it was Victoria Place which predated Garfield and was the area from 7th Street to 9th Street. Uh, Van Buren, uh, just 
oh, not even to uh, McKinley. Well, mostly McKinley. But we, we have uh, a number of historic districts going uh, the farthest south one is Roosevelt Place, which is 7th Street and Southern. It's the little known area that, that was platted that has some period revival houses uh, and, and dates from the late 20s. Uh, the farthest north area uh, is Windsor Square and Medlock Place, both from the 20s. Uh, development of Phoenix, major development of Phoenix came after the war. But what we have, uh, we have architectural styles that relate to the period. Close into downtown, uh, we do have some uh, examples of Victorian era uh, around the state capitol. Uh, very small. Uh, we, we have maybe 20 to 30 uh, hundred year old houses. My understanding is a lot of those were wiped out from the Great Flood in the late 1800s? Yes, and, and that... They were very flood prone very much. before the, real, the uh, reservoirs and dams were done up north. No, uh, 1920 was uh, the Cave Creek Dam and, and the flood at that point went all the way to the state capitol and, and prior to that in the 1890s was floods and, and people who were living in, in Jefferson, on Jefferson and Washington moved, moved further north. And, and north was considered uh, just as far north as McDowell. McDowell was higher elevation. In fact, Central and McDowell historically was a toll road. You had to pay to go north on Central Avenue from McDowell. It doesn't mean that there weren't residents there, uh, but it was a toll road at Central and McDowell. Architectural styles. Uh, historically, Victorian is, is the first era, Queen Anne, uh, those around the capital. There, there are very few. The Rawson House is an example of that. And in my own life, uh, I remember when it was a boarding house. Uh, before 1976, the Bicentennial, John Driggs was the mayor restoring the Rawson House. Uh, there are. I know that project was taken on by the. Oh, or not the. Um, Junior League. Junior League. Yes. Because I know a friend of mine was involved in that. That we that, here. that brought so much interest. Uh, the Junior League, as far as the Rawson House, uh, the restoration of the Orpheum Theater, which went various times uh, as far as Palace West. Yes. And, uh, uh, but, but yes, and uh, the Junior League also did the first commercial survey of Phoenix, which brought about uh, knowledge of commercial buildings in Phoenix. So the Junior League was very, very important as far as historic Phoenix is concerned. Now, we have a lot of style. A lot of them are period revival. But I noticed, compared to Tucson, Tucson has a lot of adobe. But yet we don't have much adobe. What would that be with the heat and... We, we had, and, and uh, first and foremost, the building was done uh, appropriate to the environment. Mm -hmm. and, and that was adobe. We had row houses. We had very similar buildings to Tucson. The railroad came in, and, and now everyone wanted something modern. Uh, the railroad brought in materials. Before things came uh, by mule train, a actually the old uh, um, uh, borax commercials as far as coming into the valley uh, with mules. But, but with the railroad, materials came, new ideas, and people. And with that first link uh, came development from Chicago. Now, what, when was that first link? Uh, 1896. Okay. Uh, but we waited until 1920, the 20s, to have a mainline train depot. We had various others, but only in the 20s, 23-ish, between 21 and 23 was uh, the depot. The railroad 
brought uh, new people. It brought people to the valley. It, it brought people who wintered here. Uh, originally, and, and the first train that came from uh, uh, Prescott into the valley uh, was Chicago business people. And at various times, uh, they would bring trains to Phoenix and uh, private cars to Phoenix. And they, they were the first people to... to uh, original investment with Phoenix uh, was always Chicago. Dwight Hurd came uh, and, and came from Chicago. Well, they did. Money. Yes. And they're still quite a well name because they 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 established the Heard the, Museum. The Heard Museum and what is now the the uh, Phoenix Towers was the home of Casablanca, which was the the Heard home on okay. Central Avenue. And this was built nineteen uh, between nineteen three and nineteen six, and it was almost five thousand square feet wow. of a house. So it was huge. Uh, many patios and and all of this again the traditional style that that was typical to the valley mm -hmm. uh, period revival when it came in the 20s people modern was a style that was not typical of the valley Spanish colonial we didn't have a Spanish influence here but we had Spanish homes uh, typically on in uh, FQ story, there are streets of Tudors, there are streets of Spanish colonials, and that's what people wanted. Later in the 30s, uh, the ranch style developed, and it was the rambling ranch. It, it changed the configuration, now it was horizontal, uh, now it was L-shaped, and, and now uh, this came in the late 30s. Uh, as far as, and, and basically home styles now are still uh, variations of the ranch. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. John, thank you very much for sharing and being here and telling us about this wonderful rich history of Phoenix that a lot of us just don't know about. Are there any websites or places that our viewers can go and get more information? Uh, the City of Phoenix maintains the website. It, it's still in the process of developing, but uh, we have uploaded, the office has uploaded uh, historic surveys that are now available, and some of the historic inventory forms will be uh, online so people can see about their house. Uh, ModernPhoenix.net, Allison King, uh, does uh, mid-century modern and other areas uh, within the valley, not just Phoenix, in, into uh, Tempe, Scottsdale, and Mesa. Okay. And I do know that uh, various neighborhoods have annual home tours where they open up to the public and feature these homes built in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, it's um, nice to go in and kind of relive our history and our past. So. If you have any questions about information you just heard about, or just about real estate in general, give me a call at 602-252-4191. And thank you very much for visiting, and make it a great day.